This is the download from Sounds Profitable, your daily source for the essential news of the business of podcasting, brought to you by Spreaker from iHeart. I'm Gavin Gaddis. Here's what you need to know for today, Thursday, October 24th. First up, does video drive discovery? Audio and video podcast consumers in 2024, part two. A continuation of Tom Webster's look at the behaviors of audio primes, that's those who consume 75% or more of their podcasts via audio, and video primes, the same but for video. One notable difference between the two groups is discovery. The top discovery method for video primes finding their favorite podcast is YouTube with 66% of respondents. Interestingly enough, YouTube is also the top method of finding a favorite podcast for audio primes, indicating that even though the audience predominantly listens to podcasts audio only, the best discovery platform for them is still a visual one. Audio primes might consume with their ears, but they shop with their eyes. And most podcast apps as they currently exist either aren't video forward or, in some cases, support video at all. The race is on for publishers to produce video content to meet their next diehard listeners where they'll see it and for podcast apps to catch up with how podcast audiences find their content. Next up, BBC Sounds on the up as digital listening continues to grow. New audience listening numbers show the BBC Sounds app had 622 million plays across all of its content that includes radio, podcasts, and music from quarter three of this year. This represents a 3% year-over-year increase from the same period last year and 14 million plays increased from quarter two of this year. Two of the top three podcasts were news shows, specifically Newscast and Americast, while Audio Fiction took third place with Central Intelligence, a new miniseries, putting the Limelight feed in third place. Overall in the UK, according to Rajar data for the quarter, podcasts now represent 21.8% of listening time, which amounts to 12.6 million UK residents per week. 967,000 of those respondents listen to podcasts but do not listen to radio. Next up, the MMM fallback. In recent years, there's been a resurgence of advertisers and platforms using marketing mix modeling, MMM, which has been a company with academic research finding flaws in the model. Still, MMM was a significant conversation topic at this year's IAB Audio Upfront, with holding companies asking how audio can get access to their planning tools and MMM solutions. Writer James Hersher concludes his piece about the pros and cons of MMM with three takeaways. One should find an attribution vendor they trust. Walled garden attribution is useful for brands that exist only within that walled garden. And don't stress the minute details too much. Next up, Howard's End. How Series XM will survive after Stern. Legendary shock jock Howard Stern is nearing the end of his current contract at Sirius XM, and rumor has it the 70-year-old satellite radio pioneer is considering retirement. Recent podcasting acquisitions by Sirius XM Media cover a range of audiences, including new additions like Smart Less and Call Her Daddy, along with existing powerhouses like Crime Junkie and Dateline NBC. And while none of the big-name podcasts are behind a paywall like Stern, many SiriusXM distributed properties have satellite channels and exclusive content produced for those subscribers. With the current maturation of the podcasting market, it's possible the departure of a foundational pillar in audio, like Howard Stern, would leave a power gap that's filled by podcasting in general, instead of just one personality courted specifically to become the next Howard Stern. And finally, Spotify adds auto-moderation tool to help podcasters manage comments. Back in July, Spotify launched the ability for podcast listeners to comment on episodes within the Spotify app. Now the company is deploying moderation tools to help manage and moderate those discussions. These include an auto-mod that does not post comments marked as sensitive or inappropriate until manually approved by the host, and the ability to build a block list of words, phrases, and emoji that will automatically flag comments to not post until similarly manually approved. Comments can now be disabled on a per-episode basis as well. These new tools form the basis of a solid barricade against targeted aggression, doxing, and hate raids that run rampant on less moderated sections of the internet a move that further reinforces the brand safety of branded podcasts and sponsored podcast content. 
As for the rest of the news, a revamped Dear Millennial has joined the Forward Network. Inside Audio Marketing shares a report predicting consumers will spend an average of $902 this year on holiday shopping. Spotify released the next iteration of its Radar program with a focus on helping creators with video podcasting. And the NBA is partnering with select YouTube basketball creators to drum up hype and content as a new season approaches. Be sure to check out the links to every article mentioned right in your podcast listening app or at soundsprofitable.com, where you can also subscribe to the newsletter version. The download is written and produced by Newton Shadalcotti, myself, Brian Barletta, and Tom Webster. This episode is hosted on Spreaker. For Sounds Profitable, I'm Gavin Gaddis. Download us again tomorrow. <laughs>